Hello there, I'm Custom, a competitive Splatoon 3 player and coach, and today I'll be bringing to you how to splash shot. In this video, I'll be going over my builds, as well as sharing my thought process in a few series and open games. If you want to see more videos like this, consider liking and subscribing, as it really does me a lot. And if you want to learn more from me, get more coaching from myself, I'll leave my Metafy link in the description below. And without further ado, let's get going. With my build, I really want to enhance Splash Shot's capabilities, so its capability to move quite quickly, as well as have a lot of paint output. So that's why I run plenty of Special Charge and Swim Speed. The utility subs Quick Super Jump, so it reduces my Super Jump time by almost half a second, which is quite a lot for one sub. And the uh, Intensify Action, since it did get a buff for its accuracy, this just makes it more accurate, makes my aim more true. And Stealth Jump is just a universal thing for frontline weapons because you want to hold space more further up the map and for as long as possible, so Stealth Jump helps me get in those positions a whole lot easier. And now I'll be showing you some builds from Sendo.ink. A lot of them like to run Comeback as their hat ability. Again, that's just kind of preference. The build's not the end-all be-all, it's just kind of dependent on what you feel comfortable with. But otherwise, the subs are pretty similar to what I'm running right now. And with all that said, let's get into the games. Alright, game one. Is it Clan Blitz? Eel Tail? Okay. What are we going up against? Alright. Well, we definitely have to play for Bridge a lot, just because if we do lose that, it makes it really hard to get back in. So you'll probably see me playing that a lot. And also just kind of playing for my Zuka just based on my build. I'll also throw a lot of bombs on bridge because I don't want them to stand on bridge either. A lot as a form of high ground. The Zuka just get these guys out. He's weak, but I think my teammate can get him. Yep. Yeah. Help with the fight. Want to die to the dynamo, so we'll go around. I'm gonna step on bridge just because it'll take a lot to get me out of here. I can also just throw clams from here. I almost have my Zuka again, so I might just build for it. Ooh, three more clams. Yeah, see, like now they're gonna force two people up here. That was actually a good shot by 96. That wasn't even 96? Wow. I thought that was the 96 for some reason. That's okay. Not bad, I probably could have played a bit more aggressive just to build Zuka. And I should have paid attention to that bomb, that's alright. Our teammates is already playing bridge, so I'll probably jump to them. So again, I can just bomb. And like, I placed a bomb behind them, because that split them, so they're either forced to go in front, or behind, or just die to the bomb. But I guess the best case scenario happened there, so they both died to the bomb. I just want to hold mid as well. That's a good pick on the on the 96. That's a good bomb placement as well. I just kind of want to sniff out where they are because I don't really just want to rush in with no information. I'm gonna Zuka, see if I can get these guys out. Do a shot over the wall. <laughs> How good wait. That's okay. They have Kraken, so I don't really want to rush it. Just trying to live. Get that guy out. He wasn't he wasn't expecting us to be there, that's for sure. And they're definitely not expecting the bombs. I'm gonna hold my Zuka and play a bit more passive. Again, because I actually want to keep my Zuka and I want to use it for when they're seeming a bit more threatening. I'm gonna get back on the bridge, because I don't want to take the bridge. It gives me a wide open opportunity just to Zuka, whoever's on the bridge. Just get them out. I'm gonna push up super far. Probably strike behind this block. Get one. That's fine, because we can just continue to push. Maybe. If not, that's okay. I'm glad this time was actually giving me a jump. Might be a bit risky, but that's okay. Having someone in mid is definitely more useful than having no one. 
So I'm just gonna play it safely, just play for pain. I see the 96, I just don't want them to like, go super far. Luckily my teammate forced a Kraken. My teammates can watch the top, I can watch the bomb part of the bridge. I also have about enough time so I can build my Zuka as well. So I can use my Zuka if I have to. I'll get on bridge because no one is. And right as I say that, someone they rush through mid. That's okay. Or through the bottom. Probably a slight misplay. I wanted to take bridge because I saw no one up there, but the last two are on the bottom. So I probably should have had my attention more towards that. Again, super close to Zuka. I'm just gonna play for it. I see the 96 shooting. It's just on the bridge. I'll probably get on the bridge so I can get a clear shot with my Zuka. We do get the dynamo. We get we get some usage, and we force specials as well. So. Now they have no specials for their push, which is actually really good. Because now they're, they have to use like brute force just to take mid back. And I can just sit here all nice and pretty. I'm not that ugly, I promise. I will let them take the space, because that's all their specials gone. I'll also take the clams, just so they can't grab it. I don't really need the ball either. Got rid of the ball, because we don't really need the push. It also just keeps like my stealth up so I don't get located because of the ball. I'll sit bottom this time, I learned my lesson. And it actually didn't make a ball, so good for us <laughs> that they didn't make a ball so they couldn't trigger over time. That was an alright game, we actually forced them to use specials really early. And we used our entire kit just to force engagements they didn't really want to do. So whether it was with my bombs or my Zuka, it just made engagement super awkward for them and made them take once they didn't want to take it all, really. We do get a lot of pain. Again, that's just kind of based on my build. I'm wanting to play around Trizuka a lot. But we do go 11-4, which isn't bad whatsoever. I think our team did good overall. We held quite nicely only let one push in. Or do we let a push in? I did not see. Oh, we let one push in. That's alright. But besides that, I will see you in the next game. Alright, game number two. We're actually changing up this time with the map and mode, so... There'll be zones. Makomart. You'll probably see me play a lot more passive, because I don't really want to overextend. And also with their comp with... Petra's and 52, they want to play really aggressive, so I don't really want to... bait myself into that. So that the gal's already super far up, and I believe someone's wanting to flank. No, they're all just on the left side, so I'm not going to force it. I don't want to go down here either. So in neutral phase, you don't really want to fight at all. You just want to stay alive and get picks as they come. Which my team pretty much did. I'm playing a bit risky with the Zuka. I'll back up. I'll Zuka early just catches Hydra off. Force that 52 off. Now he's by himself. <laughs> That Zuka kind of disrupted their whole push because it made the Gal go outwards and also made the Hydra back up. So they were super split up at the end of the day. So use Tetras to help my teammate. Crab, I'm just going to wait for Crab to be done. So I have no business really challenging it. Again, I'm just going to play for my Zuka. You'll hear me say that a whole lot. Tetra's are stack, I don't really want to fight. He's super weak. I can jump out, that's okay. I wanted to have most of my attention on zone so we could hold it as long as possible. I'm still relatively close to my Trizuka. I might use it to get the Hydra out of there, but my team seems to be doing a good job of that. Use my Zuka, get them in. And we do get two of them with that, which is actually quite nice. Their movement was super predictable because they had the back up from my teammate on stack, so I knew they are towards the back side of the zone. This Hydra to Gal wants to just go right the entire time. I'll respect his whale, but I'll keep track of where he wants to go. He wants to go mid, he wants to 
get rid of whoever's on the left. So we'll help our team with that fight. And we also have a Zooka and they're two down. We use to get rid of this Hydra. Get rid of these Dooleys. That should be a game. Get this Gal out of here. That should be it. <laughs> Die at the end, but that's okay. I'd say that was a great game overall. I give props to my teammates because they made it super obvious about what they're wanting to do and also where they're wanting to force the opponents. So again, like that, I believe it was uh, Cass, I believe. So he challenged our stack and that force server is there to back up. And that just made them lead right into my Trizuka. Like it was super easy for me to recognize like, hey, those guys are backing up. So it made the shot super easy to aim and actually hit those two. Not a bad game. Definitely could pay attention to flanks a lot more, but I think we played that smart as we could. And that about does it for game two, and I'll see you in the next game. All right, game three. On your toe, Raid Maker, our comp Carbon Brush may have to pay a lot more for them. And they have a whole lot of paint, so. That is definitely something to keep in mind, as well as a special charge on that arrow spray. I think we can get pop. Oh, fuh, yeah. I won't hold left zone. So we do have an offensive pressure. And we do have map control, so I do have have it in my favor. Also, all of them are down, so I'm gonna push like really far ahead. I trust my teammates that they deal with the air spray. I just want to get Zuka. I got one shot. Get rid of that guy in the ink rail. <laughs> he falls off the map. <laughs> I don't want that idea. I just want to hold the spot and be a nuisance as long as I can. Again, at this point, I just want to prolong the push. I don't want to force it. Saw that air spray flanking. I might take the Rainmaker for extra points if I can actually grab it. <laughs> it would have been nicer if I grab it the first time, but my general idea was to just keep the Rainmaker on their side of the map, just so we can regroup a lot more aggressively. Couldn't do anything about that bomb on my jump, really. That's unfortunate. I'm not gonna jump as aggressively, just because our carbon probably wants to shark with the little ink they do have around them. Try and pinch, not really worth it. That ends up out. I just want to hold, again, just being in like a really annoying spots. They can't really get me out of unless they actually do a lot. Saw that guy. Yeah, man, I thought someone would take the Rainmaker, but I guess not. Oh, now we do. <laughs> it's alright. I'll get in front, even though I'm marked. I'm forced to go in front, so I'm going to wait, just take a moment. It's only the end zap, so I'm going to probably go for the pop. And there he is. There they are. So your teammate actually picks it up, because I actually got space in front. I almost have Zuko, so I might play a bit more passive. I shot the sprinkler, so I guess that was a bit of a meat shield, but that's okay. Okay, we're just keeping this... Offensive pressure going for so long, like they're not able to get to the middle of the map super easy. Just because we're prolonging our pushes as long as we can. Didn't want to die to the Rainmaker. I guess my dialogue <laughs> kind of took me out of focus there. That's okay. Yeah, nothing crazy. Just want to make sure no one's wanting to flank and then prioritize the Rainmaker. I almost have my Zuka as well, so I'm going to play for it. Which I do have. I don't really want to fight anyone. I just want to take my time with this and just punish over extensions because I do want to keep my Zuka and actually use it in a more effective time. They're cooler, so they might be more aggressive. Help our Rainmaker. 
They use cooler, so I know they'll be back really quick, so I'm gonna take as much space as I can. Let's say that guy took a Rainmaker or a Zuka shot like right to the face, but didn't die. But get that back. Send us one shot. We do win the 1v1. Okay, I'm just gonna hold, just force mistakes. I'm not forced to do anything here. And I know they can only be defending from just behind the cover there. Hopefully it helps with the zap. We don't get the assist, but it's okay. Let's see how long we can stay here. <laughs> not very long, so I'm gonna jump out. Man, we are not <laughs> having anything in our favor this game. That's alright. I'll jump to our teammate. I don't know if they're being rushed or not, but they seemed in a safe location. I want to take myself out of this corner. My teammate's probably going to cover the left, so I'm going to cover the right. Like, I have a comfortable amount of paint and space. They look like they want to go to the opposite side, so I'll probably go there instead. Not a big deal that I take my time. Just because we do have so much to work with. And they kind of forced the Rainmaker to go left just because I sat there and my teammate positioned quite nicely. So they're kind of forced to deal with both of us or at least deal with my ballpoint teammate. Overall, that was an okay game. There was definitely some shenanigans going on there, but not bad nonetheless. And we do get the third win, which is, again, very nice. I will never complain about getting points towards S plus 10. 11 and 5, not terrible. Again, probably could have played better, but it is what it is. And that about does it for the games. And with all that said and done, thank you so much for watching. If you have any further questions about the play Splash Shot or any other weapons in general, consider booking a Medify session, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And leave in the comments below what weapon you want me to cover next. And yeah, I will see you all next time.